This is a tutorial about uh, moving from a SOLIDWORKS file to a DXF and then into an Adobe Illustrator file and finally saved as an EPS uh, Illustrator file for use uh, with uh, Pinoco's online uh, laser cutting service. Uh, so this part has those uh, areas highlighted are engraved portions. Um, they'll be laser engraved and then the outline is going to be uh, cut out. So once you get done with the file you are uh, ready to move into a drawing so that you can properly export as a DXF. So I'm going to create a drawing. Uh, any of the formats will, you, will be uh, used. Um, I'm going to edit the sheet format to delete all the extra lines and uh, ensure that the sheet format properties are set to uh, scale one to one. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is make sure that the uh, units are millimeters. Uh, Pinoco uses millimeters scales in all of their files. So I'll add the model uh, top view and we are ready to export this file as a DXF. So saving as a DXF, there's a few options you have to be uh, aware of. Um, I'm using Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator 2014. So I'm using R13, uh, release 13. I used release 14 and had an issue with uh, bringing in the DXF with double paths for each line, um, which is a big pain. So uh, R13, release 13 worked great. Uh, so I'm saving the DXF file and uh, now we can import it into Adobe Illustrator. So we're going to open the file as just a normal file and ensure that it has original size and the scale is in millimeters. It's very important. So Pinoco uses uh, a certain set of guidelines. Uh, you have to have the stroke at 0 0.01 millimeters and the stroke color for uh, engraving and cutting are different. So cutting is blue and it's 00255 in RGB color mode uh, and engraving outlines are red uh, 25500 and engraving fill areas are uh, z black uh, and they're black fill. I'm just deleting some um, extraneous paths that were brought in from the DXF file that I should have deleted in SOLIDWORKS. So um, I've colored the outline, all the lines in the uh, DXF blue. So one issue you're going to find with these uh, DXF files is coloring the lines separately for blue and red areas. So what I'm going to do is break apart the paths using a tool called Pathfinder under Window. So you click Pathfinder and then you click Outline. What this is going to do is break apart most of the paths where other paths intersect a path. So uh, one problem with Pathfinder outline tools, it removes all the stroke and color and everything. So you have to add those back in. Um, and you also have to ungroup all of the objects uh, because the Pathfinder tool groups them together. So uh, I'm just coloring um, or adding the stroke back into the lines right now uh, and uh, making sure that it's ungrouped. So uh, you'll kind of see here the path on the top is not split apart, so Pathfinder Outline did not do it. But on the bottom, it worked. So now we can color those paths independently, which is what we need to do. Um, but I'm going to need to split apart that path um, at that intersection point with that vertical path. So the way you're going to do that is use the Direct Selection tool, the white arrow, select that top path, and then select the Scissor tool. And right at the intersection of the vertical path with that uh, circular path, you're going to want to select right at that intersection point. And now the path is split apart into two. So now you can color that part portion of the path red um, to denote a engraving area and the bottom part as well. So we're gonna color that red. I'm gonna make a new swatch um, so it's easier to color all the lines. And now that area is correctly colored. It's pretty hard to see, but uh, it definitely is colored red, um, the correct color. So now we're going to fill that area with black to tell uh, Pinoco's laser cutters that we want that area laser engraved. So the way we do that is select all the paths, 
open up the live paint bucket tool, select your color, and select the area. Now for some reason it defaults to white every time, and I'm not really sure if there's any illustrator gurus out there who can tell me why, that'd be great. But if you go back in, select the color palette to black, then you can um, see that it, it colors the, the area inside um, the red and blue lines uh, black. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. And this is where you wouldn't need the path, um, the pathfinder tool. Um, you know, if all of your um, engraving areas were inside the cut path, uh, then you really don't have an issue because there's 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 you, there's no need to color um, two adjacent paths two different colors. So we're going to go in and uh, use the live paint bucket tool. Reselect black again. And I'm going to show you one other problem that I had. So the path selection tool, obviously, it doesn't break apart all the paths, but we know how to fix that now with the scissor tool and the direct selection tool. Um, but one area you're also going to have an issue with uh, sometimes is uh, when you try and use the live paint bucket tool um, and I'll show you that in just a second so I'm splitting this path apart using the scissor tool and coloring it to denote a engraving fill area now I'm gonna select these these paths and I'm gonna try and use the live paint bucket tool and it's gonna give me an error and this is going to say use the live paint group and merge the paths and the way you do that is under object live paint and merge and once you do that then it'll behave like some of the other paths that you select without having to do that and it'll allow you to fill the area black again it defaults to white so you have to change it back to black and i'm sure there's some better workflows here i'm not uh, fluent in illustrator at all so uh, but that's just a quick overview of um, how to split apart the pass, which was a big issue for me. Um, I didn't know how to do it, and uh, so that, that's just the quick rundown on how to do that. Once you uh, finish, uh, you can um, fill in the rest of the areas, and then save it as an EPS file, uh, making sure to uncheck all of the uh, options. And then from here, you would open up their template and insert your EPS file into their template. I hope that helps everyone, and I appreciate you listening. Thanks.